DR Congo is joining the East African community to form the largest African federation. What benefits will it get? The Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, is a country in Central Africa. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, as it is officially known, has a 25-mile Atlantic Ocean coastline but is otherwise landlocked. It is the continent's second biggest country, with Algeria being the largest. Kinshasa, the capital, is about 515 kilometers from the Congo River's mouth. It is the country's official administrative, economic, and cultural center and is Central Africa's largest city. To distinguish it from the other Congo Republic, which is officially called the Republic of the Congo and is generally referred to as Congo, the country is often referred to by its abbreviation, the DRC, or as Congo, Kinshasa, with the capital appended parenthetically, Brazzaville. The Democratic Republic of Congo has applied to join the East African Organization, ESC, and might become the seventh member of a regional economic community. It would give a vast market for the region's exporters, as well as a venue for the DRC decades-old tensions with Rwanda and Uganda. The ESC is now considering whether the DRC could be a suitable candidate after a preliminary debate of the country's application at a summit on February 27. A team from the ESC Secretariat completed its verification mission to the eastern DRC city of Goma on 3 July. The report will be presented to presidents of the ESC member states in November or December to help them make their decision. What is the East African community? Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda make up the East African community, which is an intergovernmental organization based in the African Great Lakes region of Eastern Africa. The current chairman of the EAC is Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta. The group was created in 1967, disbanded in 1977, and then resurrected on July 7, 2000. After negotiations with the Southern African Development Community and the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, the ESC decided to expand its free trade zone to include all three organizations' member states in 2008. The African Economic Community includes the ESC as a member, Arusha, Tanzania's capital, and Dar es Salaam, Tanzania's most populous city, are both in the E. A C Africa Reloaded will show you the advantages of the Democratic Republic of the Congo joining the East African Federation. We hope you like seeing this video. Stay tuned as we learn more about these advantages. The Democratic Republic of Congo will benefit enormously by joining the East African community. The benefits include 1. Free movement of people and goods between the Dar es Salaam and Mombasa ports and the rest of the bloc. It will facilitate free flow of products, particularly in the country's eastern region, said ESC Secretary General Peter Mafuki. On Friday evening, he made this point during the official opening of the ESC verification mission to DRC, which is investigating the latter's bid to join the union. 2. DRC, like the rest of the partner states, would nominate nine members to the East African Legislative Assembly once admitted. It would also be responsible for appointing justices to the East African Court of Justice, the community's judicial body. The ESC, on the other hand, is advocating for the entrance of the largest country in Sub-Saharan Africa because of the benefits to the region. 3. Due to its current economic links and large natural resources with great potential, the DRC is viewed as strategic for EAC growth. However, Ugandan lawyer Adam Kaimi Hendo has challenged DR Congo's admittance to the bloc at the East African Court of Justice. In a lawsuit, an attorney for the High Court of Uganda claims that DRC has been keeping Ugandan activist William Mugamia and more than 35 other Ugandans illegally and without due process. 4. The admission of the Democratic Republic of the Congo to the E, a C makes the idea of a political federation more appealing than it is now, when it is viewed with distrust and skepticism by many. With the possibility of a super-rich neighbor marrying into the family, current nationality rivalries would fade in importance in the face of the option of forming a super-state, because all members would benefit from being a part of it, unlike today, when some members believe they would lose by joining a larger union. 
5. The shift would enable the use of some idle resources feasible, with no negative consequences for the DRC or the area. A power dam at Inga, for example, would provide 60,000 megawatt of clean, renewable energy and put an end to the discussions and headaches over whether or not to build hydroelectric dams in East Africa. 6. After Tanzania, the DRC, with almost 2.4 million square kilometers, would be the largest country in the E, a C block, 947,000 square kilometers. DRC has a population of 86 million people, nearly half of the present E, a C population, while being significantly larger than the combined 6 E, a C member states. 7. Even the process of evaluating DRC's admittance helps to refocus the community on more noble aims and the work that must be completed in order to achieve them. Squabbling among members is unlikely to inspire Congo's 81.4 million people. They had enough problems as it is. The trade dispute between Kenya and Tanzania must be settled through mature dialogue if a resource-rich country is to be attracted. 8. Multinational corporations, South Africa, and China are among the significant forces active in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This isn't a secret, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. DR Congo would get a better perspective and world vision by joining and working within the East Africa community, from which it could engage with the rest of its international trade partners. When Congo was privately owned by King Leopold of Belgium, the situation was far worse. It was subjected to Mobutu C's Siko's kleptocratic rule. Things can only improve from here. The ESC is in a good position to assist with this beneficial transformation. 9. The admission of the Democratic Republic of the Congo to the East Africa community makes the idea of a political federation more appealing than it is now, when it is viewed with distrust and skepticism by many. With the possibility of a super-rich neighbor marrying into the family, current nationality rivalries would fade in importance in the face of the option of forming a super-state, because all members would benefit from being a part of it, unlike today, when some members believe they would lose by joining a larger union. 10. The federal model, which has worked so effectively in developed large countries, would allow residents of the super-state to focus on their talents and energies, as current difficulties such as tribes and religions would be more difficult to exploit. The most promising defense against Africa's re-enslavement is the regulated evolution of blocs like the East Africa Immunity Federation. 11. A coin always has two sides to it. The East Africa community's image is currently bleak, with Rwanda in the chair and tense relations with Uganda and Burundi, the community secretariat in a Russia mired in financial problems, and most member nations failing to pay their obligations on time. However, this is a stage in which the EESC's aspiration to be a regional leader should not be stifled. Admitting Congo sends a strong message of aspiration to the continent and sets greater goals for it. With all of these various advantages listed above, it is clear that not only the DR Congo will gain from the East Africa community, but that the East Africa community will profit from the DR Congo as well. A number of reforms will be implemented that will benefit the African population. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for future updates.